Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Now, getting back to my roots, out in the Moorlands, of course, these special big roots, but for me, I, I'm, a, I'm a backpack geek, I'm a bag nerd, I just love them. So a few months back, I did some, con there's a lot of flies today, so if there's a lot of wafting, made some content on the Go Ruck Rucker 4.0. Um, and I was incredibly humbled when Go Ruck got in touch. They said that they'd love my content and asked if I'd like to have another bag to try out. And this humbling kind of thing, it, it, it's, it's great, it really is, especially when uh, certainly companies that I, I love and respect reach out and ask if I'd like to make some content. I, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a huge deal for me. Um, I mean, I try to play it cool. I'm like, oh, I'm sure I can fit something in my schedule when behind the keyboard, I'm like, yeah. So um, the absolutely amazing team uh, at Go Rock have sent me the GR2. So I have made some GR1 content in the past. I'll leave a link to that somewhere. Um, I really, really liked the Rucker 4.0. It was, it's, it's an exceptionally good rucking bike. I mean, it's, it's their kind of, it's the cream of the crop for Go Ruck if you are wanting to have a bag devoted just purely for rucking. But it also made a very good EDC bag. So they wanted to send me the GR2 um, just to see what I thought of this. Um, I mean, sneak peek, it, it, it's, it's, it's massively impressive. It, it is, it has, it's built like a tank as you'd expect from Go Ruck. But just as some things slightly different over the GR1. So I have bought my GR1 with me today. So we'll concentrate on the GR2, but then just have a little bit of a look at the difference between the two, uh, just in case you were unsure what or at least how the GR1, the GR2, and the GR3, how that family works and how they all relate to each other. Now, before I start, I just want to say a massive shout out to the Go Rock team, the management there. Um, just really, really nice guys. Great to talk to, great to bounce ideas off. So, uh, huge shout out to those. There'll be links, but I'll, I'll get to that at the end. Now what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around so that we can take a closer look at this whilst I'm doing that. If you do enjoy this content at any point, please feel free to hit like, subscribe and share. It would be absolutely amazing. Um, and it's polite of me. It certainly is that at this point I'd like to say thank you. If you, if you do choose to do that, then I, I definitely appreciate that. But for now, let's turn the camera around and take a closer look at the GR2. So here we have the GR2. Now, as far as this backpack is concerned, this is the 26 litre, but as in with, with a family within a family, the GR1, GR2, GR3, and so on, um, the GR2 that we have here, uh, there are three different versions of this. This is the 26 litre, which is the smallest version of the three. There is a GR2 34 litre, and there is also a GR2 40 litre. So depending on what you need, how much you need it, for this style, this layout, they all have a similar layout. It's just the fact that dimensions or capacity wise, you've got the three different sizes. As far as dimensions on this one, this comes in at 12.6 inches by 18 inches by 7.25 inches deep. As far as materials, so again, there are a few different options as far as materials with the GR2s. Um, it comes in either a 1000D or it comes in a 500D. This is in Multicam Black. I think, what are the colours now? So I think it's like Black Coyote. There is a Multicam Black. I think there is just a normal Multicam. Uh, there is a green Multicam uh, multi Tropic, which looks really, really nice. And they're all in this 500D. Whereas if you went for the Ranger Green or what was the other one? I think it was the Steel colour, um, then that comes in 1000D. Now, definitely have a look at the website because when you click on one, it will show you what the options are and the colours that are available for that size. Um, throughout the pack, all of the zippers on here are these incredibly large number 10 YKK zippers. And they also have these 
um, silent pulls on them, which are actually really nice. Certain bags, when they've got the, the actual metal zip pull, they do jangle around quite a bit, and it certainly doesn't on this. All of the webbing on here is ridiculously tough mil-spec webbing. Um, and then on the bottom here, just on this additional panel that we have, to make sure that it's got extra resistance against, against abrasion, uh, you have this 1050D ballistic nylon on the bottom. So that if this is dropped, it's thrown around, it'll, you know, it'll just roll with the punches. And I think that's, that's the big thing with your, your, your go rooks. Although, yes, this is great and you can use this for your daily commute. If you want to go rooking at the weekend with something like this, you certainly can do. Now, for those people that are new to rooking, rooking is the pursuit of just going for a walk with a weighted backpack. Now, I've done quite a bit of rooking with this. I've had this now for about three months. Uh, last weekend, uh, well, just to pick one of, of a few, last weekend uh, I went out with my wife and my daughters and we did the Three Shires Head. I had about 15 kilos, well, no, it wasn't about, it was 15 kilos in this, plus all of the other stuff that we took with us. And, yeah, you know, it, 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 just, it just carries the weight really well. And again, apart that comes to the suspension system, which we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at in a minute. Now... We'll go through all the different sections so that we can see what's on each. Now on the front here, the front is a reasonably simple front. You have some nice uh, molly, um, I say molly, so it's pals webbing here on the front. You have uh, three rows with six columns that you can easily attach additional bits onto if you choose to. There is a hook and loop uh, morale section here at the top. This one came uh, with the US flag on there, which I certainly wear with pride. I, 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 I'm not from the US, but um, you know the freedoms that this this flag gives people. It's it's certainly something to be respectful of. And then on underneath there, there is a little zip pocket. Now, famously, they do have this diagonal zip pocket, which it's just a nice little feature on here. Reach into here, so this goes all the way down to the bottom. So this whole seam that runs across here, this is where this, this zip compartment is. And it, as far as going up further, rather than going any further, that zip is the top of it. But in here at the moment, you know, I have my lens cap and have my car keys, just to make sure that I know where they are. Other than that, it's a really nice kind of plain front. Um, I think when you go for certain colorways, it has a very kind of, you know, a very classic kind of look as far as a backpack is concerned. On the bottom here, as I already previously mentioned, so you have this additional um, 1050D ballistics nylon on the bottom. Yeah, this thing can absolutely take a kicking and, you know, just look like it's a, look like it's a normal bag and it's... It's bit like it's brand, it's brand new. Onto the sides. Now both of the sides are the same. I'll just flip those round. Hopefully you can see here on that side. Um, but on this side, another nice clear panel. There are two rain hoods, which we'll have a look at when we actually look on the sides. And then we have some additional pals webbing here. So we have two rows, sorry, three rows with two columns on each of those. So if you wanted to add an additional um, additional water bottle carrier or something like that onto the side, then yes, you can add that on there as well. Now, if I remember rightly, so this, so this doesn't come with a waist uh, strap. However, the waist straps that, um, that Go Rook use actually attach to these, uh, so that, that's used for that as well. As I mentioned, this side is exactly the same. Moving on to the top here, you have this absolutely ridiculous um, grab handle. Now, I've said this in all of my videos before, but Go Ruck packs are thoroughly over engineered. Um, and they're done so for a reason, you know, these bags, as I mean, you know, you can go to, you can do your daily commute on this, but if you want to take this out the weekend, and just destroy yourself then you can do so having something like this it's just great um, I have a medium to large size hand uh, it passes through with ease on the inside of here you have well actually so you, you have some rolled um, 
webbing at the top to create the actual uh, loop to pass your hand through and then on the inside you have some nice foam that's then used the uh, that's then with the same liner so that you can then um, yeah it's nice on your hands behind that if I push this down you can hear the hook and loop opening there so if you wanted to run a hydration system or a bladder on the inside of this you certainly can do and this is where it then comes out so that you can either go for a lefty or a righty depending on how you want to rock this bag so getting on to the internals now the main difference between the gr1 and the gr2 really just does come down to the internals the gr1 is a single compartment style backpack it makes it very simple um, and certainly uncomplicated the gr2 i mean it certainly doesn't complicate things not at all it, it's just it's a two compartment pack which allows you a little bit more freedom as far as how you want to compartmentalize each of the whatever sort of gear that you want to put into here um, two large zipper pulls the zippers on here, now, it's more of a thing that you, you kind of get used to, I think, with some, with, with, with some of these packs. They're very easy to open, but every now and again you'll get a snag. Now, it's not really a snag, it's because these are so well built and so tough, you have to kind of make sure that you give it a good pull to get around the corners. It's not an issue, <laughs> I suppose, I'm not even sure why I'm amazed, why, why I said that, but it's, it's more of an observation, so if you ever see me struggling with the zips, it's not because there's an issue with the zips, you just have to make sure you give them a good pull because it's, it's just such a rigid and tough pack. But both of these open right down into this bottom hinge, uh, I suppose into the corners which allows this to act as a hinge. Um, also thing to note is that all the way, so both of these compartments, one here and one behind there, and also this front uh, easy access pocket, all have these really nice large rain hoods to make sure that if anything does get onto here that, that the water will brush over the zips to help to stop water from getting in there. But this opens up into a nice clamshell. Now I do have some of these field, uh, these field pockets which I'll, I will make some further content on because um, I'm, I'm trying to work out how we can use these and they're, they're actually really useful but um, I have had these in here and I've been, I've been storing my tech in here so I'm just going to put that to one second. Here I have my notes and then on the inside through this panel we have some additional organisation and then there is also some uh, additional organisation in, the, uh, in, the, in the, the bit that the lid I suppose you'd call it. Here at the top you have, and these are all constructed from the same material, so this is the 500D uh, on here, you have this really nice access pocket, so I, this, is, this is that Hoto Tools um, screwdriver, I, I, I do, I generally always keep this with me, and then behind it I have that other little one as well, um, but this is great, especially when I'm going into the office I can fit extra things in here, and then we have a lot of this really tough mesh so this is used really well through all of the pack whether it's it's internally or it's it's on any of the it's any on any of the lids to add additional space to be able to store things nice large zipper and here I carry uh, a, again just some more pens and things that I, that I need for work in the top panel here there are two additional pockets so there is one very similar to the GR1 in here which you know I, I keep a, a, a scratch a boo boo kind of kit I've got some a, a pad just in case I need to keep some notes and then again underneath here there is another large um, mesh pocket that you can store things into as well now that's that front section as I mentioned, this does have two compartments. Now behind that, again with these really nice zips, they zip all the way again down to the bottom so that you can full clamshell this and it will open right out to all of the stuff that you can have stored in here. Now, it's a bit of a mess today, to be fair, because I, I wasn't too sure what to bring out with me. So I've got my, um, this is what I keep my camera equipment in. These are made by Alp Kit. Do you know what? They, they're an absolutely amazing UK company and they've stopped making these. And I wish they'd start, because these are brilliant. They really are good, but yeah, they, they don't make any of these anymore, but yeah, they're great. Um, I, have, I brought some rope with me just in case I needed to tie my bag up. 
Um, I have my little tech pouch. I got these this from IKEA. This is just you know just kind of everyday use. But this is the one that I transfer between lots of different bags. I also have in here my larger tech pouch. This is the one generally that I'll keep in my bag uh, when I'm going into the studio that I work in. An extra little um, Aldi kind of tote bag. And the one thing that I know you've all been waiting for now, I, I the what when Go Rock sent this to me, they did confirm that this pack was designed before Tactical Teddy Bear regulations became an international thing. So this was designed before Tactical Teddy Bear Carry had been thought of. However, through the way that it's designed and the way that it's been planned to be used for lots of different things, I can confirm that it is retrospectively tactical teddy bear compliant so that's always good then in the back here so as, as I mentioned you know, I have been using some of these these uh, these padded cells but across the top you have some additional molly so that you can attach things to and if you wanted to or sorry pals webbing that you can attach molly systems to and then in the back here this is where if you wanted to do some rooking while well, I had I don't have any rook plates but what I do is I have a uh, have a a 10 kilo um, bench press weight that I have wrapped in towels and I'll put into here and then I have another five kilo wrapped in a towel that I can put into there as well. Now as far as carrying a laptop is concerned I carry a 16 inch laptop when I go into commute unfortunately the 16 inch laptop won't fit into the dedicated laptop panel here at the back however it fits perfectly into this. So I still get to be able to carry my laptop into work and, and make sure that it, it, it's all safe and it, it's not rattling around. But that goes all the way down to the bottom um, and there is some additional padding at the bottom as well. Up onto the lid section here, you have similarly, so there's just some more meshing. There is a large pocket here at the top and then an additional pocket here so that you can put extra stuff into. Now when I'm traveling, having my laptop in here, being able to throw all of my different laptop cables uh, on my mouse and all the other stuff into here, it's just perfect. So that what you, what I tend to have been doing is, I'll have my laptop, I'll have all of my work stuff in here so that I can go to the office, I can be in my studio, I can do everything that I need and then I can put additional things in here, keeping them separate from those for going to the gym, putting some trainers in here and yeah, being able to use this and have more freedom of choice on where I'm putting the different things. So then flipping this bad boy round, we have the rear. Now I'm just going to pull the straps to one side mainly because as I've alluded to quite a few times already today, there is a dedicated laptop section here in the back. So with this zip you can pull it down and then you get instant access into there. I rock a 16 inch laptop. Unfortunately for me, with the dimensions of this, my laptop pops out maybe five or six mil too far, but it just means that I can't get the zip over to, to be able to close it. But being able to use where the rook plates should be stored on the inside, it, it's not really been much of an issue to me. I've just used it in a, in a, certainly in a different way. Uh, but I can put the dimensions of this here so that you can see exactly what you can fit in here if you wanted to check your laptop against the, uh, these dimensions. Also on the inside, with this little piece of Velcro here, you can also get access to uh, uh, the, the plate in the back. So there's a rigid plate in here. If you did want to remove that, it will just give you a little bit more freedom through the back um, and be able to reduce it a, a little bit of the weight if you, if you wanted to. So bringing that up, we have the, I mean, I've talked long and hard about the suspension system on the GR1 and the, the Rooker 4.0. And it's a strange thing, mainly because it's a very simple, uncomplicated system, you know, it's, it's, it's a very traditional style. Um, it's sewn into before you then get the, the padding that comes out into the straps, so it just gives a lot more freedom of movement uh, through the shoulders. They do seem to be spaced just a little bit wider than I found on other backpacks here at the top. So 
I, I find for me, I have reasonably broad shoulders. I, I certainly don't look like an Olympic swimmer, but what I find is I just get little to no wear across my shoulders here with this because of that additional um, space between the two. The foam that they use in here is really that kind of Goldilocks foam. It's not too hard, it's not too soft, it's just right. But the beauty of this is really on how wide these are across. When you're trying to put a lot of weight into this, these really do an excellent job of being able to disperse that across your clavicle when it comes across your shoulders. And then as this tails down across your chest uh, and out, then you have a little bit of ergonomics on here so that it just kind of sweeps around underneath your armpit. There's, there's just some, uh, there's some special sauce Mama's a special sauce um, with with GoRux because so many other companies have a stim similar style, but I'm I'm trying to think of the words to best put this. I think a lot of instances there's a lot of hype around these bags and what you can do with these bags. And at first I was like, oh, you know, it's just hype, but it's one of those when you get one and when you put one on and then when you put some weight into it and you walk with it, it's just something different. Um, yeah, so not to, and not, not to keep going on about it, but the suspension system on this, it's a very simple, uncomplicated suspension system, but just does just this special magic. Now, on the front, so this is a sternum strap that I've added. I don't think it comes, no, it doesn't come with this, but you can purchase these separately. I personally, I like a sternum strap, so I, I do move this between uh, each of my GoRux if, if, there, if there is one that doesn't have one. But I definitely recommend one. If you're thinking of picking them up, picking up one of these, I don't think they're expensive. I think they're, I, I wanna say that they're about far, no, uh, 10, $12. I mean, it, it just makes sense to get one. Come down, we have some really nice buckles on here. Then you've got this ridiculously tough webbing and then it's stitched here into the sides. And how does it wear? Well, I've just waxed lyrical quite a bit about that sweet, sweet magic that GoRuck managed to do with their packs all through this suspension system. It wears exactly as you'd expect, but it's got that, just that X factor You've got it on, you've got some weight in there. Due to the, where it's um, anchored into the backpack, you've got that additional width, so it comes perfectly. There's no twist in this. Sometimes where you have the ones where it's, it's, it's closer together, you get a little bit of twist, a little bit of flex as it comes over your shoulders. There's no twist, there's no flex in this, so it fits perfectly across my shoulders, onto my clavicle, and then down and around my chest. It does a very good job of being able to handle weight because of this, because of the wide strap that it has on here. But when it's on, certainly lots of freedom of movement, doesn't pinch, doesn't wear. Again, because these are a little bit wider, there's, there's certainly no wear on my neck whilst I'm walking or climbing over things. It's just a great pack and, <laughs> I'm just saying it again really, but yeah, go rock have just perfected the suspension system on this. Now definitely an observation that I've had between the two versions, and it's not really a version thing because you have the option for both the GR1 and the GR2. Certainly been able to test out the difference between the two materials on here. The 1000D certainly is a lot tougher um, it, in the fact that it's tougher, the material itself is a lot more rigid, um, it's a lot more dense, and you do find with the GR1 that there is a little bit more wear on the material of the clothes that you're wearing. Having been able to test the GR2 out in the 500D, it's definitely a lot more, I'm trying to think of the word, I mean this is tough, it's ridiculously tough. This is still very tough. It's, it's not a wimpy pack, 500D is still very tough, but it's, it's just not as rigid as this. So as far as wear on your clothes with the 500D, they've actually, I think it's perfectly the sweet spot of the two materials. Now other than that, the differences between, the main differences between these, if I hold these up, 
hopefully you'll be able to see that the footprint of the GR1 is slightly bigger. It's slightly taller, slightly wider. When I put them side to side like this, hopefully you'll be able to see that because they are still 26 litres and it has a reduced height and width, then you have the additional depth with the GR2. The GR1 is slightly slimmer. But other than that, you know, they're very similar. The grab handles on the top, these things you can throw them around, you're not gonna have to worry about them breaking at all. The back panels are exactly the same. The suspension systems are exactly the same. They are the same bag, but we really got back to the fact that with the GR1, it's a very uncomplicated bag. Not to say that this is complicated, but you have that single compartment. Everything that you want to store is all stored in this single bomb-proof compartment. With the GR2, you have the luxury of being able to choose or have a little bit more freedom as far as where you'd prefer to store your different kit when it's in there. Of the two, I like the additional freedom that I get with the GR2. It is a little bit smaller as far as the footprint on your back for me. It sits a little bit higher, which I do quite like. The GR1 sits a little bit lower. It's not a massive amount, but for me on this one, it sits a little bit higher in the small of my back, which is actually a little bit more comfortable, especially when I'm carrying loads going into the office and stuff. But yeah, two absolutely amazing packs. GoRuck also have a 1% to the people who serve system. So anything that you purchase from their website, 1% of that will go to both active and inactive service men and women. Which I think in the current climate, being able to help to support through your purchases uh, and for a company like GoRuck to be able to donate to helping to support those, is certainly com a commendable thing. Uh, it's certainly something that I, uh, I, I doth my cap to. Um, I haven't served, however I have the utmost respect for the people who serve all around the world. They, they put a lot on the line to make sure that we certainly have the freedoms that we have today. Now I will leave all of GoRuck's links below. I certainly again want to do a massive shout out to the team over at GoRuck uh, for sending this out to me. I am generally humbled whenever I'm offered stuff to, to, um, to test out and I, I think from a company like GoRuck that I love and have a massive amount of admiration and respect for. Um, yeah, massively humbled and yes, I, I certainly thank you to the team there for reaching out. I want to do another shout out, mainly because there's another channel that does a lot of GoRuck stuff. He's absolutely amazing. Make sure you check out GB Outside. So his channel's great. He's got a lot of experience uh, with GoRuck packs. If you want a second opinion on the GR1, then definitely check him out too. I'll leave his links here as well. I'll leave my social media links. So if you want to check me out on Instagram, it's generally where I tend to be a little bit more than anywhere else. You can see other things that are being tested. I think I've just been bit on my leg I'm not gonna do this again I'm just gonna keep going um, but yes you can see yeah you can see me on there and generally the things that I'm also testing out as well um, but yeah let's get out of this flea ridden uh, wood and for now <laughs> stay safe stay Moorlander and stay EDC jazz hands you buggered either way you don't wear shorts, it's hot. It's really hot. You do wear shorts, you get bit. Celebi. And this is Moorlander EDC. Today, back outside with something that I love. I'm a big, huge, Stinky, like weirdo. I mean, yeah, I'm a weirdo. To be fair. Here's a question for the rest of the world: If you got to the end and you're watching, you watching the outtakes, the bloopers. Had a yeah, a bit of a session on the pop last night. Um, if you're watching, Craigie. Pedro, Killer, you guys rock. Um, let's hear in the comments, where are you in the world? Do you do pub crawls? Uh, we have a 
mile, maybe two miles. Uh, there's 15 pubs along it. Generally try to have a pint in each. Some of them are closed or, you know, there's some reasons, but yeah, you generally get to go through and eight, nine, ten pints. Yeah, there you go. So, drink responsibly, kids.